Welcome everyone to the Fairy Frequency Channel. Today I'm reading to you from Shambhala, The Sacred Path of the Warrior by Chagyam Trungpa. Today's chapter is chapter 17, Natural Hierarchy. Living in accordance with natural hierarchy is not a matter of following a series of rigid rules or structuring your days with lifeless commandments or codes of conduct. The world has order and power, richness that can teach you how to con conduct your life artfully with kindness to others and care for yourself. The principles of heaven, earth, and man that were discussed in the last chapter are one of, one of the ways of describing natural hierarchy. They are a way of viewing the order of the cosmic world, the greater world of which all human beings are a part. In this chapter, I would like to present another way of seeing this order, which is a part of the Shambhala wisdom of my native country of Tibet. This view of the world is also divided into three parts, which are called Aya, Nyan, and Lu. These three principles are not in conflict with principles of heaven, earth, and man. But as you will see, they are slightly different perspectives. Law, Nyan, and Lu are more rooted in the laws of the earth, although they are knowledge. Although they are although they, although they acknowledge the command of heaven and the place of human beings. La, Nin, and Lu describe the protocol and the decorum of Earth itself. And they show how human beings can weave themselves into the texture of basic reality. So the application of La, Nyan, and Lu principles is actually a further way to invoke the power of Drala, or elemental magic. La literally means divine or God, but in this case, I, uh, sorry, La refers to the highest points on earth rather than the celestial realm. The realm of law is the peaks of the snow mountains where glaciers and bare rock are found. Law is the highest point, the point that catches the light of the rising sun first of all. It is the place on earth that reaches into the heavens above, into the clouds. So law is a, as close to the heavens as the earth can reach. Psychologically, law represents the first wakefulness. It is the experience of tremendous freshness and freedom from pollution in your state of mind. Law is what reflects the great eastern sun for the first time in your being and is also the sense of shining out, projecting tremendous goodness. In the body, law is the head, especially the eyes and the forehead. So it represents physical upliftedness and projecting out as well. Then there is Nian, which literally means friend. Nian begins with the great shoulders of the mountains and includes forests, jungles, and plains. A mountain peak is La, but the dignified shoulders of the mountain are Nian. In the Japanese samurai tradition, the large starched shoulders on the warrior's uniforms represent Nian principle. And in the Western military tradition, epaulets that accentuate the shoulders play the same role. In the body, Nian includes not only your shoulders, but your torso, your chest, and your rib cage. Psychologically, it is solidity, feeling solidly grounded in goodness, grounded in earth. So Nian is connected with bravery and the gallantry of human beings. In that sense, it is enlightened version of friendship, being courageous and helpful to others. Finally, there is Lu, which literally means water being. It is the realm of the oceans and rivers and great lakes, the realm of water and wetness. Lu has the quality of the liquid jewel, so wetness is connected here, with richness. Psychologically, the experience of Lu is like jumping into a gold lake. Lu is also freshness, but it is not quite the same as the freshness of the glacier mountains of La. Here, Freshness is like sunlight reflecting in a deep pool of water, showing the liquid jewel-like quality of the water. In your body, Lu is your legs and feet, everything below your waist. La, Nian, and Lu are also related to the seasons. Winter is La. It is the loftiest season of all. 
In the winter, you feel as if you were upstairs above the clouds. It is cold and crisp, as if you were flying in the sky. Then there is spring, which is coming down from the heaven and beginning to contact earth. Spring is a transition from Wa to Nian. Then there is summer, which is the fully developed level of Nian, when things are green, in full bloom, and then summer develops into autumn, which is related with Lu, because fruition takes place, the final development. The fruit and the harvest of the autumn are the fruition of Lu. In the rhythm of the four seasons, La, Nian, and Lu interact with one another in a development process. This applies to many other situations. The interaction of La, Nian, and Lu is like snow melting on a mountain. The sun warms the peaks of the mountain, and the glaciers and snow begin to melt. This is La. Then the water runs down the mountainside to form streams and rivers, which is Nian. And finally, the rivers converge in the ocean, which is Lu, the fruition. The interaction of La, Nian, and Lu also can be seen in human interactions and behavior. For example, for example, money is La principle. Establishing a bank account and depositing your money in the bank is Nian, and drawing money out of the bank to pay your bills or to buy something is Lu. Or another example is as simple as having a drink of water. You can drink water out of an empty glass. You, sorry, you can't drink water out of an empty glass. So first, you pour water into the glass, which is the place of La. And then you pick up the glass in your hand, which is Nian. And finally, you drink, which is the place of Lu. La, Nian, and Lu play a role in every situation in life. Every object that you handle is connected with one of those three places. For example, in terms of clothing, the hat is the place of law, the shoes are in the place of Lu, and shirts, dresses, and trousers are in the place of Nian. If you mix up those principles, then you instinctively know that something is wrong. For instance, if the sun is beating on your head, you don't put your shoes on your head as a visor to protect you from the sun. And on the other hand, you don't walk on your eyeglasses, you don't stuff your shoes with your ties, and for that matter, you shouldn't put your feet on the table because it would be mixing up Lu and Nian. Personal articles that belong to the law realm include hats, glasses, earrings, toothbrushes, and hairbrushes. Articles belonging to the realm of Nian are rings, belts, ties, shirts, and blouses, cufflinks, bracelets, and watches. Articles belonging to the place of Lu include shoes and socks and underwear. I'm afraid it is as literal as that. La, Nian, and Lu are quite straightforward and very ordinary. Observing the order of La, Nian, and Lu is what makes human beings civilized, and therefore we might refer to them as the ultimate protocol. By following the order of La, Nian, and Lu, your life can be harmonized with the order of the phenomenal world. Some people would like to ignore such basic societal norms. They say, so what if I put my shoes on my head? But everybody knows that something is not quite right in doing that, although nobody knows exactly why. People have an instinct that prompts them to have a place for each article of clothing or household belongings. Those norms actually make sense. Your bedroom and your entire house are much tidier if you put certain belongings in certain places. From that, you develop rhythm and order in your experience. You do not throw your garments on the floor. You do not put your slippers under your pillow, and you do not use your hairbrush to polish your shoes. Ignoring the, ignoring the order of La, Nian, and Lu is very destructive. If instead of winter, summer followed autumn, and if instead of autumn, spring followed summer, the whole order of cosmic principles would be violated. In that case, crops wouldn't grow, animals wouldn't reproduce, and we would have devastating droughts and floods. When the order of La, Nian, and Lu is violated in society, it is like disrupting the order of the seasons. It weakens society and causes confusion. Sometimes you see the violation of Law, Nian, and Lu reflected in the actions of political leaders. The President of the United States putting his feet on the desk of the Oval Office, or the famous incident of Premier Khrushchev pounding his shoes on the United Nations podium. It is not that those actions in themselves are the real problem. Incorporating the law of law, nian, and lu is more than just having good manners. 
What is truly problematic is the attitude that violates the sacredness of life. Thinking that way to make a forceful statement is to turn the world topsy-turvy by ignoring its basic norms. You lose your trust in the phenomenal world, and at the same time you become an untrustworthy person yourself. Someone who thinks that wheeling and dealing his way through life is the road to success. Maybe there is some temporary victory in that kind of approach, but ultimately you are throwing yourself into the gutter of the world. So, respecting the order of La, Nian, and Lu is very important. This does not mean just paying lip service to those principles by having an orderly household with everything in place. You begin by appreciating your world, by taking a fresh look at the universe, which we have discussed over and over. Then, out of that, you will feel the presence of La, Nian, and Lu in your body, your entire being. You feel the wakefulness and vision of Wa, the solidity and gentleness of Nian, and the rich possibilities of treading the earth, which are Lu principle. Then from the discovery of basic decorum, you begin to understand how to join La, Nian, and Lu principles together by giving yourself to others, by serving your world. Joining La, Nian, and Lu is exemplified in the act of bowing, which in many Oriental cultures is a traditional greeting. For the Shambhala warrior, the bow is a symbol of surrendering, surrendering to others, serving, serving them. We're not talking here about the literal act of bowing, but about the warrior's whole attitude towards his or her life, which is one of selfless service. When as a, when, as a warrior you make a bow, you begin by establishing your head and shoulders, uplifting your posture. You don't just roar in and bow, but first you hold yourself erect. This connects you with the realm of law and with raising wind horse. It is as if you had glaciers on your head, as if you were Mount Everest. And then from that cutting and fresh glacier mountain realm of law, you begin to bend down by lowering your head and hunching slightly. You give to your shoulders from your head. This is making friends with Nian and acknowledge the breadth and the vastness of your shoulders. And then finally, you complete your bow. You submit to the realm of Lu. You completely surrender. Your entire three systems of La, Nian, and Lu are offered as you bend down. Bowing is giving away basic goodness and wind horse to others. So in bowing, you are surrendering potential power and magic. And you do that with real proper feeling. It is a threshold, pro a threefold process. Hold, feel, and give. First you have to hold, otherwise you don't make any statement. If you bow to someone by just flopping down, that is a very gullible bow. It does not have any heart to it. The witnesser of that bow, the person you bow to, will regard you as an untrustworthy person. The idea is that the magic of the bow the power of the bow actually confirms both people. When you bow to your friend or to a good, trustworthy person who also possesses that power, then you are sharing something together. If you bow to the sun, setting sun, if you bow to Mickey Mouse, you are degrading yourself. The warrior never does that. So the bow is based on acknowledging someone else's worth, his or her La, Nian, and Lu existing in front of you. And as a mark of respect, you do not rise from your bow until the other person rises. The bow represents a complementary exchange of energy, as well as being a mark of decency, loyalty, and surrender. It is both an example and an analogy of how to join La, Nian, and Lu together. Basically, the point is to serve the world. Tools which help us to shape our world are also regarded as joining La, Nian and Lu, and should be given special respect. The same is true for human beings who help to shape the lives of others by serving them. So a teacher is highly respected because he or she is joining La, Nian, and Lu in the students. Ideally, politicians and public servants also have this role. The role of the warrior altogether is to join La, Nian, and Lu in order to help his or her fellow human beings. Living in accordance with natural hierarchy is not a matter of following a series of rigid rules or structuring your days with lifeless commandments or codes of conduct 
The world has order and power and richness that can teach you how to conduct your life artfully with kindness to others and care for yourself. However, just studying the principles of Law, Nian, and Lu is not enough. The discovery of natural hierarchy has to be a personal experience. Magic is something you must experience for yourself. Then you will never be tempted to put your hat on the floor, but more importantly, you will never be tempted to cheat your neighbors or your friends. You will be inspired to serve your world and to surrender yourself completely. And that is the end of chapter 17, The Natural Hierarchy. So if you've missed any of the previous chapters of this wonderful little book, you can find them in our original playlist titled Shambhala, The Sacred Path of the Warrior. Thank you so much for joining us today. Wishing you all a beautiful day.